The algebra fund on Thursday, okay, please. We have the algebra fund on Thursday. That's going to be from 2.30 to 5.30 p.m. in the cafeteria. If you can make it to the whole three hours, that would be better because that will give you an opportunity to practice and ask questions about any topics that you have had difficulty with in the first or second or third partial. Okay, now if you have a class, then don't skip class to go to the algebra fund, but rather uh, arrive late. It doesn't matter, okay? Uh, now, the plan that I have is that uh, all of the other teachers from the Math 2, uh, who, are, who are teaching Math 2, are sending me exercises which we will be working on, on the, in the algebra form. So, even if somebody couldn't make it, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to upload them, okay? So, I'm going to put them in Blackboard, and then you can still practice those same exercises, okay? Now, the benefit of going to the algebra form is that you're going to have at least three or four teachers that are gonna, we're going to be there so that we can help you and we can you know, answer any questions that you might have and probably recommend more exercises if the ones that we're going to bring are not enough. You know, there's going to be like hundreds of exercises. So that's the idea. Remember that the idea of the algebra thumb is not to try to finish all of those exercises there. It's going to be impossible. Rather, I would suggest that you do maybe from the first topics of the, fir uh, the first partial, maybe do two or three, okay, and then skip to the second partial, do another two or three, the ones that look nastiest, the ones that you think that you might not be able to solve, because that's when you're going to have the opportunity to ask some of us teachers, or maybe someone who's in the same table as you working, okay, and maybe he or she remembers how to do it, and then go ahead and do it, okay, so that's the idea. I really hope to see most of you in the algebra thing. Now, I know that we had vacation, <laughs> one week vacation, summer, uh, not summer, uh, Easter break, Semana Santa. So, just to warm up, there's something that we're going to do now. And that is going to be find the solution to the following system of equations. Now, I know that we saw this in the third partial. This is nothing new. It's just, let's say that it's, this is a post-vacation warm-up. Okay? Because we're all kind of cold. Our brains are kind of cold after vacation. Okay? So, I'm going to write these two equations right here. Okay? And I'm going to give you a few minutes. The idea is to solve that system by whatever method you like, okay? Whatever method you think is best, except for graphing, because we're going to confirm the answers by graphing, okay? So you do it by adding and subtracting, or equaling, or substitution, or what, however you want, okay? Solve this system, we'll find the, the solutions, and then we'll go ahead and do the, do the graph, okay? So I'm going to write the rest uh, of the things that you have to do here. Okay, using any method. And then confirm the answer by graphing. Now, who can tell me what type, what is the um, graphical interpretation of those two equations? What are they? Linear. They're linear, no? Yeah, you can speak up. Okay, mm -hmm. don't be shy because of the camera. Uh, so, um, they are both linear equations or first degree equations, so that means that they are straight line. If there's a solution, then how are we going to interpret, how are we going to be able to see that solution? What's it going to be? Intersection. It's going to be the intersection of the two lines, okay? So, does anyone have a solution already? No. Yes. Okay? Now, so if you want to come ahead, Paolo, please, and, and uh, write your solution down on this side, okay? However you made it, okay? And then we'll have someone uh, maybe come and do the graphing solution. So I first substitute the y into the equation. Okay. Okay. So minus. So he's doing the he's solving the system by uh, substitution. Okay, and maybe it's it's an easy way of doing it because of how it was presented. Okay, since one of the equations 
is already uh, already has the Y isolated, then it makes sense to go ahead and substitute this one into this Y. Yes? But if you isolate Y on the other side, it can be plus if you isolate y on the other side, like this one? Yeah. Okay, yeah, you send this negative y to the other yeah. side, then you could go ahead and do equaling. Mm -hmm. That would be another alternative, that's also fine. So x is equal to 2. Okay. And then I substitute that. Y is equal, y is equal to minus 2x plus 5. So y. Is Did anyone else arrive to that same solution? x equals 2? Okay. How many? One, two, three. Ooh, we have lots of confirmations. Very good. <laughs> okay, very good. So x equals 2 and y equals 1. So if we think about that as what it means graphically, okay, we can say that this is a coordinate 2, 1. Right? So since we do have a solution, then that means that the graphs of those two linear equations must intersect at this point, at 2 comma 1, right? Now, I'm going to turn on the, the screen. I hope uh, I still have enough space there. There it is. Okay, yeah, we have enough space. Now, who would like to come and do the graph of the first one? Now, you can choose either doing the table of values, which uh, sometimes is not, you know, it's a little bit more work and all that, but uh, you can use that if you want, certainly. And uh, you could also use what else? What's the other way? To isolate y. Okay, so if you isolate y, we will have the equation, let's say, in this format. Okay, so we will have the slope. Okay, this is like a little staircase. Mm -hmm. And we're going to have the y intercept. Okay, so that will allow us to have one point and then a way in which the graph either uh, goes up or down, okay, the line. So who would like to do the first graph? This one, over here. And then we'll, of course, we're going to confirm. Okay, anybody else? Okay, uh, Diego? Okay, sure, come on. Come on down. <laughs> Uh, drawing the intersection point, the solution. Okay, so the solution is at two comma one. Okay, let's put it right there, and then we're going to check if it's true. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> now, if you can maybe do it over there on the right, if you still have space, yeah. So let's let's say that this is equation one, and this is equation two, so we can identify them in the graph. Okay. We'll call this one equation 1 and this one equation 2. Um, this one is not in this format. So if we want to use slope and y-intercept, we have to turn it into that format, no? transform it into that format. This one is already like that, so, so it's easy. You're doing number 1? Which one? Number 2? Ah, you picked the easy one. But Manuel is going to be doing the hard one. It's not so hard, actually. Okay, 5 is a y-intercept. Good. And slope of negative two. No, no, you need to go down. Oh. Yeah. Remember that the slope. Right. Remember that the slope is the uh, the change in y over the change in x. So if we have a slope of negative two, we can express that as negative two over one. This is what we move in x, try to move always to the right, okay, in the positive direction, and negative 2, well, means that we're going to go down in y, okay? So, of course, if the slope was 1, that mistake would have no consequence, okay? But, since the slope is 2, if we do it the other way around, then we have a completely different slope. Uh-huh. Yeah, 1 to the right, 2 down. Two down. You're here, now 1 to the right, 2 down. Well, so at least that, uh, which one is it? Equation number two, the second line, is going through the point that we think is going to be the, the, uh, the solution, okay? Now, so the line would look something like this. Well, it's not very 
straight but more or less. Okay?